Right, everybody, Manchester United versus Liverpool. We lost 3-0. It's pre-season, last game done. But these are the five things we learned. Let's get straight into it. Number one, Casemiro cannot do it anymore. I mean, his performance yesterday was really, really poor. He had decent sparks where he looked okay, but the majority of the performance was really, really shocking. And something that I'm not really used to seeing by Casemiro, I think the level of his performance was abhorrent. I mean, he was getting bypassed in midfield. There was a lot of gaps between defence and midfield. And I think the best thing for Casemiro to do is go to Saudi or leave Manchester United anyway. I don't think he has the quality now. We know he's probably going to be at Manchester United. He'll probably be starting the first game in just under two weeks for Manchester United. That shouldn't be happening, but there's not really much we can do about that. And yes, he will be staying at Manchester United, but his performance yesterday, really, really poor. In the in the first couple of first pre-season games, he did look really, really good. He looked sharp. Um, he looked more fitter than he was before. And then now he just seems like he's gone through himself anymore. And I don't think he has the legs to do it anymore. That's why Manchester United urgently need to bring in another CDM. Whether that's Ugarte, Amrabat, someone else. Just to replace what Casemiro can do. We know he has the mentality and the ability to do it. But he just can't do it anymore. Just looks like he's struggling every single game. And that number six position is such an important role. It's the conductor role. It's the role... That is really important, particularly in this Manchester United team. I mean, we haven't seemed to get it right over the last couple of years. We brought Casemiro in. You can only, he only did it for one good season. Amrabat alone deal didn't really work out. We need to get in that number six. And whether that be Ugarte, whether that be someone bringing in someone else, like we've really got to get that deal done really, really quickly. So, yeah, that's the first thing we can le learn. Casemiro cannot do anymore. And that is really, really unfortunate because... Casemiro is a player I like a lot. He's one of my favourite Manchester United players. He's the five-time Champions League winner. He's a serial winner. The fact that he can't do it at Manchester United anymore is so, so disappointing because he certainly does have the mentality and quality and the experience to do that. Only if he was three, four, five years younger, he would be in his prime years at Manchester United right now. And that's disappointing. The second thing we learned, Marcus Rashford Sharp, again, he gave Conor Bradley a really, really good game. Um... He was really, really sharp, attacking him, going on the inside, outside, getting some shots away. He had that really good turn where the shot just went wide. Rashford is becoming a really, really sharp player. I think he's got a real, real good connection with Harry Amas on that side. They seem to have a very, very good relationship. The understanding of the game is fantastic. But I've also noticed about Marcus Rashford as well. He's defending more. And in that first game of the season, which we're kind of looking towards now in the Community Shield, Rashford will probably start that game in the false nine. Um, or he would definitely start, but or maybe in that striker position. But we'd love to see what happens. But we did learn that Rashford is sharp again. He's continuing. Um, he looks fitter. Yes, he didn't score goals or get assists or anything like that. But he is look really, really sharp, and he looks different from last season. We know Rashford can do it. It's all about him actually doing it and now performing on the pitch. The third thing we learned, Amas again, fantastic. Coming up against one of the best wingers in the Premier League, one of the most consistent goal scorers, Mo Salah. He defended really, really well against him. It was going to be a very, very tricky game. And it shows that trust and belief that Eric Ten Hag has given him to kind of go out and do what he had to do. And that's something Harry Amas is really fantastic at doing. With the thin left-back situation that Manchester United have, I'm sure Harry Amas will be in and around that Manchester United squad next season. He'll have a big impact, a very, very important player. Someone who can help Manchester United go on leaps and bounds. Um, and for 17 years of age, he's a mature, high-quality player. Um, and I think he will be a really, really, really big part of Manchester United's future going forward. The fourth thing that we learned now, Manchester United defensive depth. I mean, listen, Eric Ten Hag had to take off Johnny Evans and Lindelof as a precaution. Maguire wasn't out of the game. Maguire wasn't in the game, sorry, due to a precaution. Lindelof, we don't know what's happening with him. Johnny Evans is at the club. Lissandro Martinez, we don't know what's happening with him. Lena, well, we know when he's coming back from injury. Lena Euro, he's injured. Manchester United need to get a centre-back in. And it was actually a United Standing interview asking Eric Ten Hag about a centre-back. And I think he did say we are comfortable there. Um, and they are looking for other options. But listen, we certainly do need to bring in another defender, another centre-back. Who that will be, I have no clue. Will it be De Ligt? Most likely... Manchester United are looking to secure a deal with that. But if it's not De Ligt, who will it be? Um, so it's looking like De Ligt is really the only option at the minute. I think Manchester United will go ahead with that deal. But yeah, the defensive depth is really, really poor. Um, 
listen, we can't have Johnny Evans. Like We know he's going to be around the club, but we don't want him starting main Premier League game for Manchester United, as well as Lindelof. You want Martinez, and you want a solid right back next, uh, right centre-back next to him. And I think that will be Matis De Ligt. It's all about how quickly Manchester United can get that deal done for him. I'm hoping it can be before the first game of the season. He definitely won't be starting the, the Community Shield game. I mean, he said, what, six days? He just won't start, um, even if we do sign him before then, which I don't think we will anyway. But, yeah, we need to get in some more defenders. And that defense defensive depth is really, really poor. I mean, we had Will Fish and Reese Bennett come on in that second half. And I think Will Fish actually got injured. So, And then we have to finish the game with Casemiro at centre-back. We can't be going back to that again. So we need to get in another centre-back ASAP. And the last thing that we learned, Manchester United did not take their chances. I don't think we should have ended that game 3-0. I think, yes, Liverpool were probably the better side throughout the whole game. But still, we had so many chances to score. Rashford, Sancho had a few. Like, we were just, we'd be creating a lot of chances. And the press was really, really fantastic by Eric Ten Hag's team. It was a high, tenacious press. Something that we haven't really seen by Manchester United before. And I think it was really, really nice to see. So, yeah, I mean... Preseason's over. We'll be doing the five things that we learned from preseason in a separate video, so check that out. Let me know your thoughts as well in the comments. What What do you think about my five things that we learned? Um, we'll be keeping you up to date with all the Manchester United news. Hopefully, we can have a big season as well. Thank you for watching and peace.